All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. It is your host, your boy, the Wolf of Crypto here. Uh, you guys are listening and checking out season two of the Crypto Millionaire Journey. I got a special guest for you guys today. I got Mr. Edmund McCormack. Uh, he is the CEO of Dechained. Uh, welcome, Ed. I'm glad you can come on the show today. Thank you for having me. Should uh, I officially call you Mr. Wolf or is it Mr. Wolf of Crypto? Is it the full last name? I mean, you know what? To be honest, it's whatever you're comfortable yeah. with. You can call me Mr. Wolf. You can call me just Wolf of Crypto. WC. To, you call me WC. WC that's that's a new one. I like I like that. You call me WC. Uh, like I said, um, welcome to the Crypto Millionaire Journey. Um, like I said, this is season two. I told you guys I'll be changing up a little bit. We got our first guest on this season. Um, so yeah, Ed, I uh, just kind of want to get a little bit of background about you, yourself, what you're kind of up to right now, and then we'll go ahead and dive into D Chain uh, that as your as your project as well. It is so. There's you know, we have two projects. Uh, okay. But before I jump into that, a little bit about me. Uh, so you know, before I, I got into the the crypto world professionally. Uh, and, and launching both an education platform as well as a hedge fund as well as a managing partner of DJ and Capital. Um, I spent 15 years in the tech industry. So uh, again, I might be quite old for some of your listeners, but uh, starting out in tech back in my space. Mm-hmm. So having worked with Tom. Oh, you worked with Tom? Tom uh, he was in our office, yep. And <laughs> having sort of gone through that that phase of you know social media starting to build up and having seen that undercurrent of this is going to be big mm-hmm. and, and ultimately i didn't know how big it's going to get and ultimately you know we got to the point that we are today mm-hmm. uh, and then moved on and spent some time about six years over at apple uh working on their services team and helping launch apple music and oh, then God. more recently uh having launched a crypto education platform really focused in on really opening the doors and lowering the bar for people who have been sitting on the sidelines, have heard about crypto, mm-hmm. didn't really know where to go, providing some of it a safe place where they can go ask questions that they think are dumb, that they ask it to someone who's not going to judge them. Mm-hmm. And you know, also provide them that up-to-date information uh, as every day goes along. And you and I had a chance to catch up before the show it's a full-time gig to, to just stay up to date on all these projects to, yeah. stay, to know, you know, the latest game that could be, you know, blowing up on Phantom versus Avalanche versus Solana. It makes your head explode. So we do a lot of that legwork and, and we package it up really neat. So, uh, and, and that's something that, you know, we've, we've been doing for quite some time now. Uh, more recently, we we actually decided to spin off a, a separate, unaffiliated, I have to say legally unaffiliated, Mm -hmm. because we have a fiduciary as an investment advisor on the education side, a hedge fund to to focus in on, you know, Web3, Mm -hmm. gaming, uh, entertainment, companies that have actual commercial value, they're generating revenue, they're actually building products and services. And we want to be there to support them and and help that ecosystem grow. Because we think that those are the, the sectors of this space that really have a lot of uh, potential when it comes to disruption and, and growth. Of course, of course. And um, as far as D chain, I guess for uh, me, I guess I guess what I want to kind of ask is like, where did the I guess whole idea of just want to onboard these people? Because um, I know, like I said before the show, we had Chaz caught up. Um, mm. I think for me, when I have conversations with people when it comes to crypto. I think the first thing they comes to mind is like they're 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 initially scared, and it's like how do we get past um, that initial kind of like that fear factor? I guess you could kind of say. Um, I guess why got a chance to look over your guys' project, your platform. It seems like what you guys are offering might be able to kind of kind of come into that and kind of help the average person that has always been looking at crypto. Because I you know I've tried to always talk to people that. I've never heard about crypto. Just give them a little, you know, insight of what it could be, and kind of show them the dis- different uh, sectors that you can kind of get a part of. Um, as far as like where you guys your education platform, like where are some of the courses that um, people that might register on your platform can kind of look forward to, as far as like some of the subjects that they'll get exposed to. 
Yeah. So let me just you know, unpackage because there's a few questions. Sorry about there. that. Yeah. Uh, so in terms of, no, I love it. And, and it, it sort of gets to the heart of, of what we're trying to do, which is we're trying to build something that someone could come in brand new, you know, never have really don't know very much about crypto at all. Don't even know what the word blockchain means Yeah. and providing a course and sort of the building blocks there. We have a course called how to get started. Uh -huh. You might ask, well, why do we name it? How to get started? Well, because when we did, you know, consumer research, many people said, well, I don't get involved because I just don't even know how I would get started. Okay. Boom. We just thought of, let's call it how to get started. <laughs> as simple as that. Uh, so, and then from there, building up and, and, and learning more about, you know, different projects, different areas in the crypto space. We just launched a, a, a course a couple months ago called DeFi Made Simple, where mm -hmm. we dive into, and it gradu gradually becomes more and more advanced, but everything from how to trade on a decentralized exchange, how to get a, how to get a pot wallet, yeah, all the way to, you know, the basics of yield farming for, again, risk reasons. We didn't go too deep in that because you do need somewhat sophisticated strategies and, and something we can't cover in a 60 minute course. Yeah. But you know, we try to provide, you know, you know, fundamental information and do it in a way that is, you know, giving, given through examples, easy to understand sort of language. Uh, good example is you hit it nail right on the head before there's a lot of fear yeah. you know, about blockchain or about crypto. And quite honestly, I mean, that's human nature. We're afraid of things that we don't know. And, it's been shown time and time again in the past that this is the behavior that we generally have with platforms, with new technology that ultimately we, you know, come to rely on. And you don't have to look too far in the past to see how did people react when the internet became part of, you know, our, our daily lives and people yeah. started to use it in the home. Fact is people, the average, I, I believe it was Gallup who did this study. It took until like 1998 before the average American household to go on the internet once a month, just once. Yeah. And if you just skip ahead just a couple of years, you know, it became, it permeated our lives so much that we couldn't even imagine not having it in our lives. But at the time when, you know, in 1998, you know, Jeff Bezos had already started Amazon. And I, I definitely encourage anyone who's interested, check out his interviews when he tries to explain what Amazon is. Yeah. It's hysterical, absolutely hysterical. <laughs> Uh, but that's when, you know, Google had just launched with a search engine. You had all these, you know, horror stories of all these big VCs that came in, decided we're not going to invest in Google because they were riding around on segways. Yeah. Mind blow. <laughs> uh, or Netflix or Netflix, you know, people were like, well, I'm not going to have a DVD shipped to me. Well, first of all, it was a great idea because if you're old enough to remember Blockbuster, oh, of you, course, can always, yeah. you can, you can remember that. If it was a new movie, it's not going to be available. That box is empty. Nah. So, <laughs> You're going to have to wait for at least a, at least a week. At least a week. Exactly. Least. Exactly. Uh, but ultimately, you know, these were companies that said we're going to be able to build products and services that we couldn't do previously. I couldn't build an Amazon. I couldn't build a building with three million books in it unless you're the Library of Congress. But with the website, I can. Yeah. And and that's what we're seeing here, where. There are a tremendous amount of limitations that we have right now with the today's internet model, especially as it relates to AI and internet of things. Um, and with blockchain, it opens up these doors for potentially some pretty significant advancements. I'll just give you one, one quick example. The average US hospital mm -hmm. creates something like 900 terabytes of data a day, Jeez. 900 terabytes of things that are going on in that hospital. All of it, is basically laid to waste every 24 hours. They don't do anything with it. That data is not shared. It's not given to researchers at universities. Nothing happens with it. Uh -huh. It's dead. What happens now if you took every hospital in the US globally, in fact, producing 900 terabytes of data a day and fed that to some smart people at the universities to build medicines or machines. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure that we can have some pretty crazy advancements, but you need to make sure that you have the right type of productions, anonymity, all the pieces in place. And we just don't have that today with the current internet model. With blockchain, things start to open up. And, and that's what we're excited about. But before we get people excited about those types of things, 
we got to let you know, hey, this is what it is at the at the base level, and then stop there. Yeah. I don't. I couldn't tell you how to change a goddamn thing under the hood of my car. I don't know <laughs> anything about cars. Yeah. But I could put a key in the ignition and drive it, and that's the extent that ninety nine point nine nine percent of people have to understand about blockchain. You don't need to be a computer scientist to to get this stuff. Just yeah. understand there's some crazy shit on the way, and <laughs> this is gonna deliver it. Yeah, and I think another barrier that I, I, at least for me, I get asked a lot. I'm pretty sure you might get asked as well, especially doing with your courses. Uh, like, how much time should the average person, I guess, expect to spend in some of these courses? Because for me, you know, I don't mind spending a lot of time, but I know for like somebody that has never heard about crypto, if I say, oh, you know, we're going to sit down for a couple of hours or whatever, it could be there. Their first thing, they're like, ah, I don't, I don't know if I have time to really, you know, set aside to really, you know, dive into this and try to learn it. So if you want to touch on that I'm a little bit. I'm thrilled you said that. One hour. One hour. That's okay. So it. there's the old saying, uh, I, would have, I would have written you a shorter letter if I had the time. It took me a lot longer to make a one hour course than to do... 10, and spread it out over 10 hours because mm -hmm. I had to write out about 10 hours of content and then chop, 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 get rid of the stuff that's not needed. And then say, we're going to break it up into, you know, five minute videos, mm -hmm. break it down into three parts mm -hmm. and you watch it at your own pace, but it's 60 minutes at the end of 60 minutes at the very least on our how to get started, mm -hmm. you should have a very strong understanding or be able to explain at fundamental bait at a fundamental level what the difference between Bitcoin and Ethereum is. Okay. What blockchain is versus, you know, what's a private key versus a public key. Okay. So and we do it in, in a ways that all done through examples. Uh, okay. Okay. Cause so that's not too bad. Cause I know some people were thinking like, Oh, if it's going to be like a two or three hour, type of course that's something that kind of would just not want me to be really interested um so to know that's only gonna be like an hour especially just on the how to get started that's not too bad to be an intro to get somebody to really get involved into the space because i mean if you really i feel like from at least my personal experience i really feel like if you just sit down and just focus within that hour time frame you'll actually learn a lot instead of just trying to constantly just watch video after video and then you kind of just kind of get uh what's the word i'm looking for kind of um i guess not really incentivized to really even continue to even be engaged with uh the particular subject now i did see that you guys offer uh some membership tiers uh could you kind of just go over a little bit of which tier uh is i guess uh what all comes with yeah uh and before i did the one funny thing about the course uh are getting started so I shot that at the very beginning of COVID and oh, I'm from okay. New York. Uh, and funny enough, one of the spaces was a loft that I found was in bed -Stuy. And where I shot the how to get started was two buildings away from where Biggie grew up. Now, wow. if, if anyone is watching this video, I should not be filming two buildings away from where Biggie grew up, where he was rapping about. I do not. I look like the Lucky Charms guy. That should not happen. <laughs> so it's just very funny to see sort of everyone was inside. So when you watch it, if you watch it, just know sort of the uh, sort of the context of that video. Uh, I'm funny. really, I was so stoked about, you know, filming that, that video there. But uh, for our memberships, in <clears throat> the easy way to explain the way that we structure it is there's, regardless if you, you sell a membership, you're doing sponsorships through ads, you're doing, you know, discord groups, whatever, there's got to be some type of money brought in in order to pay for the fancy cameras, the production. Yeah. We have nine people at D chains. So we employ nine people and the way that we wanted to sort of monetize everything so that we could pay for these people. And these, you know, the production is rather than someone asking, well, how are they doing this? Is it, should I trust something that they're, they're spitting out on YouTube? Are they buying it at my expense, which mm -hmm. is becoming, coming to light more and more, we just said, look, we're going to be very transparent. We're not running any ads on our platform. Uh, it's membership based, which follows the model of like Motley Fool. Many people are familiar with, you go to fool.com, 
and they have a whole bunch of you know informational content that you could consume but for $99 a month on them you get five picks and they rotate those picks every month mm -hmm. for you and they tell you what stocks to buy for us it starts at $19 a month and we tell you on a weekly basis here's what cryptocurrencies that we're buying and we have a tracker and people can follow along and, and can ultimately see you know what our portfolio every week looks like they can mm. if they deem fit can follow along uh, but on top of that we're also you know providing throughout the week packaged information that we think would be helpful for people so that they don't feel like they have to constantly catch up in the news or what's going on yeah, Break here are three things you know today you should be mindful of and stop reading this go live your life <laughs> feel like you have to be a full-time trader yeah you know? yeah yeah and that's what we do um and our our you know, our membership packages start you know from 19 dollars a month all the way up to 99 the 99 is a little bit more interactive there's a, access to more virtual workshops more events that we're doing but at the onset even at 19 dollars a month and you're getting your know, crypto picks that's five dollars a week yeah. uh for potentially picks that could generate you significantly more. I mean, $19 is a fraction of what it even costs in gas fees to, to approve a transaction in your right. wallet, not even to do the transaction. Right. <laughs> and uh, speaking of the $99 uh, dollar one, when would that one be available? Because I noticed on the website, it says coming soon. So you guys have like an idea of when that one actually drop, or is it kind of uh, a little bit ahead of uh, time right now? Yeah, so right now we have a discount on our, our $99 tier. Oh, okay. Um, so it's about, yeah, it's about a 50% reduction. Uh, we have a, a new one coming out, which is our, our premium. Um, and I'll just say it, it may be NFT based, where we might say if you buy our NFT, you get full access to our site. You just need to hold it in your wallet and connect your wallet to the site. Uh, for the people subscribing to our premium tier, they're a little bit more savvy. They know what that means, how to connect mm -hmm. your wallet, your MetaMask. And uh, that's where we'll be using, you know, some of the, the technology that we have that we've been investing in on our side, on the D-Chain side, to open up perhaps daily crypto picks. Wow. So basically the NFT side is going to have a little exclusivity to it uh, for people that kind of already have a little knowledge in the crypto um, so can you speak a little bit more on NFT or are you guys kind of keeping that uh, tucked in the hood a little bit? Don't want to give out too much uh, information on how that's going to all work or where the NFT even yeah. idea came from? Yeah, so uh, not yet. <clears throat> There's we're, we're hoping in the next few weeks we'll be able to to make more uh, more public announcement around it. But uh, the idea would be that we have a limited offer. We're only going to mint a certain number of NFTs and from there, whoever buys it will have access to uh, all of the picks that we're putting out. Uh, but rather than weekly, it'll be on a daily basis, which if you think about the speed of this market, yeah. we think that daily is going to provide just exponentially more value. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm assuming uh, the investor guides are basically just public information that anybody that comes across your guys' website can uh, go to and just kind of just kind of read up on that before even decide maybe if they uh, want to have a membership with your company. That's it. Yeah. I mean, we make the information, we make as much of it, you know, available for free as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, knowing that <clears throat> because we're U S based, there's some information that we provide that uh, would be deemed as financial advice, just because we're providing a favorable viewpoint. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we generally will uh, put that behind our paywall. Because at that point, when you're paying for it, you know, as an investment advisor firm, uh, we have that that legal protection. Otherwise, we put ourselves out there and put too much risk out there. So, uh, but we have, I mean, on our site, we have about 500, you know, about 400 guides, we have probably equal amount of articles. Mm -hmm. um, we're putting out, you know, four or five pieces of content a week outside of guides. Mm -hmm. So we're doing quite a bit. Um, and it's a lot of content there. Um, but we think that, you know, the way that we do it is less than an hour a week, you have to dedicate to just keeping up to date in the market. If we could consolidate everything that's going on in the market in under an hour a week, 
and and have people feel real confident and good that they know what's going on, mm -hmm. then we've done our job. Okay, now I'm assuming like they'll be able to follow you guys either in the newsletter f uh, formation or maybe like yep. social media just for that free version of site. If you know, if, for people that are out there that are listening and watching that might might want want to just not yet jump in the boat of paying for stuff. You guys do have all these different funnels of information that they can just simply follow, see if they, you know, if it does help them and they do find it informative, then they can kind of decide from there. All right, let's go ahead and try to, uh, to pay for it um, as well. Um, and as far as D-Chain, uh, where are you guys' uh, I guess roadmap for, I guess, the next year for 2021 as this quarter four comes to an end in the next, what, two or three months? Yeah, so we have this uh, this new tier that will be accessible through NFTs. Uh, we have a number of uh, some high profile partnerships that currently we're hoping to announce very soon as well. Okay. Um, which will, you know, will certainly increase the the overall value that we could bring to uh, to our members. But uh, there's some big things that we're about to announce that I think will change sort of the direction of, of D-Change in the coming, coming year, coming years. So uh, I would say stay tuned. And Easiest way to check out, you know, what we're doing is come check out our YouTube show. You know, I put out, you know, two, three videos a week uh -huh. um, talking about different projects. Um, again, we try to stay objective as possible. Anytime we own a token, we, we say it or we say we'll, <clears throat> we'll, we'll hold off buying it for at least two weeks um, so that we're not obviously trying to front run our, our viewers. Yeah. Um, but just youtube.com backslash dchained, D-C-H-A-I-N-E-D. Okay, okay. Well, I think that's going to really wrap it up as far as today. Uh, I want to thank Edmund uh, for coming on the show. Again, his project is called D-Chain. It is a crypto informative platform. Get some education for you guys that don't necessarily always want to do your due diligence or a little bit too lazy. Guess what? You come to D-Chain, they'll do all the work for you. You simply just got to follow along. Um, and then they'll help you also build some wealth in your portfolio. Again, I want to thank you, Ed, for coming on to the show. I uh, hope I can get you back on the show as you guys, you yeah. know, are developing more things and announcing some partnerships. And as the platform is growing um, in the future, hopefully we can get you back on the show and maybe try to get some guests to maybe ask some questions in the future as well. And then maybe I can get you to come on my YouTube channel as well, because I do have a YouTube channel as well, uh, aside from my podcast. But like I said... I'm in the space pretty deep, so when it comes to crypto, that's yeah. that's that's my life. But um, if there's any other thing you want to kind of you know say to yeah. the audience, say to the crowd, by all means, the floor is yours, sir. Yeah, I would just say uh, you gave out the URL, an easier URL to remember is goldisboring.com. <laughs> that's it. Why? Because it was available and we bought it. That's it. We thought it'd be funny to buy. Uh, so it's a makes sense. <laughs> redirect. It's easier to remember. So gold is boring.com. Otherwise you can come check us out at dchain.com as well. <laughs> All right. I hope you guys heard that gold is boring.com or check them out at dchain.com. But that's going to wrap it up for today's episode of the crypto millionaire journey. Like I said, this is season two. Y'all got a lot, a lot of stuff for you guys to plan in the future. Again, my guest today was Mr. Emin McCormack from D Chain. That's going to wrap it up. Hope you guys enjoy. Keep listening. Until the next time, y'all, take care. Peace out.